to volume 3 of Guardians of the Galaxy has just been released to great reception and critical acclaim. People are loving the movie, praising it as the best of the trilogy and should have been the movie that started phase 5 and pretty much one of the best Marvel movies to date since you know phase 4 was pretty much disappointing even though there were some good parts to it. So I'm here in this video to talk about 13 incredible moments in Guardians of the Galaxy volume 3. Starting at number 13, we have Peter and Groot team up fight scene. Like in terms of choreography, the fight sequences in this movie was just amazing. In this scene, Star-Lord meets the high evolutionary, you know, to help out with Rocket. But of course, him being in his guard complex mode already has his own plans. At this point, fans are thinking there's going to be a fight between Peter and Groot against the high evolutionary, but it doesn't happen. But what comes out next is just a bloodbath. Yeah, they don't show a lot of blood, it's the MCU PG-13. But Star-Lord and Peter were straight up just mirroring all these scientists. And as great as the choreography and the visual look was, like, this was pretty dark. When you really think about it, especially the one that Star-Lord personally tackled down. Next up is the High Evolutionary destroying Counter-Earth. Since the beginning of the movie, we've known that the High Evolutionary is just a piece of shh. Experimentation on innocent animals, lack of empathy, and having this guard complex. And so when he begins to move his, you know, his lair or whatever, his ship, and everything started going crazy and exploding due to it being embedded deep inside the earth, it just left our jaws agape. The chain reaction from the ship caused the total annihilation of the entire species on the planet. And it just hits you in the gut when you consider the fact that these creatures were made just as an experiment of the high evolutionary and eventually will want a higher species as he wanted in the movie. And so these creatures were just on borrowed time and unfortunately it came. And just so heartbreaking to see this civilization, these innocent creatures, destroyed. At number 11, we have the Guardians killing the High Evolutionary. Throughout the course of the movie, we've grown to actually hate the High Evolutionary torturing animals in pursuit of perfection, killing all Rocket's friends. And so, at this point in the movie, when all the Guardians get a lick on him, it was just a satisfying moment. And when Rocket decides not to kill him, even though he should, just made him the bigger man and showed a lot of growth in the character that we've known since the first movie. At number 10, we have the Guardians team up fight scene towards the end of the movie. This is one of the best parts of the movie. Seeing the Guardians all together, fighting together to go and face the High Evolutionary and have to go through all his creatures, all his people. And this scene just birthed a crazy fight sequence, an incredible choreography, all the Guardians getting their shine, getting their lick in, the camera work adding more shine to the fight and the music elevating everything else. Plus, it was a corridor fight scene and you know how that that makes MCU fans feel, or should I say Marvel fans, because we normally associate that now with the Daredevil show which has made it so iconic. At 9, we have the climax of the movie, when everything came to a head and the Guardians had to take a stand and face the High Evolutionary and wow, was this something. Everything was just so chaotic, with Kraglin bringing nowhere to the High Evolutionary's, you know, his own base, to the Guardians teaming up and fighting together, Kraglin now having his own moment, with Yondu's cameo being an inspiration and a wonderful moment to see, to the High Evolutionary getting betrayed, like everything was on point and on beat. Making the third of the movie, the climax, the high point of the movie, so exciting to see and experience. At number 8, we have the mid and post credit scenes. After the very satisfying conclusion and very sad ending to the movie, we get this mid post credit scenes. We are shown this new team. After some members of the original Guardians left, this mid credit scene shows that the Guardians still live on and will still be a part of the MCU, with newcomers Adam Warlock and Phila joining the team, and Cosmos being officially part now. This is also very exciting considering that in the comics, a new team was formed just like like this called the Annihilators, which means that even though this is a conclusion of James Gunn's Guardians of the Galaxy, we could potentially get a fourth movie with this brand new team. And on to the post credit scene which showed Peter in this mundane life, he met his grandfather in the ending of the movie, now he's taking time to just enjoy life and be with his only surviving family on earth. The best part of this post credit scene is the text that was shown at the end, something that is also related to the comics in which Star-Lord had his own solo adventure. So the future of the Guardians isn't as bleak as people thought. You could get Guardians of the Galaxy 4 with the new team and also potentially get a solo Star Lord movie or a Disney Plus show. Now, that is very exciting. 
at the seventh spot we have the guardians disassembling we knew this was coming but seeing it still was just so heartbreaking we've known the guardians since 2014 when the first movie was released even though people were not particularly excited or should I say hyped up for the movie since these characters were fairly unknown except for those who have actually read the comics and even though the whole marketing of the movie has been this the last ride for the guardians seeing this one big family disperse was just tough to watch it felt like our group of friends are going away especially for Drax, Gamora and Mantis Mantis not 100% sure but for Drax and Gamora the two actors playing them confirmed this is their last MCU film though this is a gut punch to MCU fans they made credit scene still gave us hope that the guardians still live on and maybe perhaps we may see him almost all of them in the two big avengers movies or other cameos in different properties at the sea spot we have peter's near death scene when the first trailer dropped for this movie the whole atmosphere felt like there was one guardian who was going to die even james gunn before the movie was released teased that some of the guardians may not make it it was not definite but that was what they were going with and with batisa and zoe zaldana coming out to say that this is their last mcu movie the bet was on both of them or one of them and the trailers even made it look like it was going to be rocket but when this scene came on everyone was silent in tears it was a surprising WTF moment that scared the hell out of every MCU fan because no one had imagined that Star-Lord was the one going to die and with the pacing of the movie and where we reached at the climax and this point it seemed like they were all going to survive and then this happened and even when Adam Warlock brought him back onto the ship with how his face looked and everything we thought that for sure he was not going to survive but he did and that was just wow at number 5, we have the first 15 minutes of the movie. Yes, the first 15 minutes. And why do I say that? Because it's one of the most perfect openings to an MCU film. Heck, I can even say a movie in general. From showing Rocket when he was a baby, and how he was selected by the High Evolutionary, to the camera panning out, showing his current self, and then just introducing the Guardians one by one and where they are right now. And just showing and presenting the atmosphere of the Guardians. Like, it felt good to be back in this world and in this space and then Adam Warlock attacks and everything changes. Warlock just came and just took every guardian out, brutally dispatching all of them to the point where we even thought that this is the point where one of the guardians was going to die and this is where our hearts got broken. Rocket getting fatally injured, the guardians not able to fix him due to his body rejecting the med parts because the high evolutionary implanted something in him that will cause that to not work. It was the perfect opening scenes to reintroduce our guardians, introduce a new character, and show what the story and the movie was going to be about. The music was fantastic, the cinematography, just the atmosphere in general just showed that this movie is definitely going to be one to remember. At the fourth spot, we have Rocket's escape from the High Evolutionary. At this point in the movie, if you've all seen the backstory of Rocket and his friends, all the suffering he's gone through, and at this point, he realizes that the High Evolutionary was going to abandon them, that they were not going to the new world that he was going to create, and that they were also going to be disposed of, well, except for him, and eventually will be. And he had already hatched a plan, swiped some parts, and was able to make a key that was able to pass them out. And just briefly, we thought that these friends had one. But then this shocking moment happens. It really is good to have. To say that this scene was heartbreaking is just a freaking mild understatement. I've never felt so much pain and just sadness for a character in a very long time. And Rocket's cry just made everything worse. Now, if you didn't hate the villain, well, I guess you do now. And the actor played it to perfection. The way he even mocked Rocket. Floor and Thieves freaking out. Like, the whole scene was just so sad and emotionally wrecking. And none of this would have been possible without the amazing talent of these actors to make this scene move you the way you didn't think it would. And Rocket pouncing on the high evolutionary was just a yes moment. Even though we know he doesn't kill him at this point, we really wished he did. And finally, Rocket was able to escape. And this just makes me and so many MCU fans want to see the life that Rocket lived before he met the Guardians in the first movie.
At the third spot, we have Rocket's Revival. As I said before, the Guardians of the Galaxy's first trailer, all the other trailers made it seem like one of the Guardians or some of them were not going to make it essentially. And when Rocket was fatally injured, we thought that this was the moment, but then he made it towards, you know, almost the end of the movie. So when the Guardians had gone through all that they went through to save him and it looked like it was failing, man, did people's stomach sink into their ass. I don't know why I said that, but that's a nasty, you know, way of putting it. But essentially, yeah, this was heartbreaking. From Peter's terrified scream and anguish and the look of Groot to seeing Rocket in limbo, seeing all his friends and blaming himself for all that happened, that moment between him and Layla, like that was just perfect it was sad it was heartbreaking it was also funny at the end with his last exchange with Layla my beloved raccoon I'm not a raccoon And finally, his revival just made this one of the highlights of the movie. Like Rocket is a treasure in the MCU and kudos to Bradley Cooper for bringing this funny, beautiful, complex character to the MCU. At number two, we have Rocket's backstory. How Rocket was made was teased in the first movie. Well, I didn't ask to get made. I didn't ask to be torn apart and put back together over and over and turned into some... Little and fans ever since have been wanting to see what actually happened to him and in this movie we finally got it we get to see this character who has been so loud funny always trolling others just seeing his pain and his trauma that is carried out since we first saw him in the first movie and it just makes us understand the character better appreciate him more and of course love him at number one, we have the end scenes. After going through this whole movie, experiencing this incredible story, we arrive at the end scenes when the good guys have won and the bad guys have lost. And the atmosphere, everything just felt like the end of an era. The end of these guardians, since they are separated. Though we know the post credit scenes, they're going to be future guardians. But this moment was just so beautiful. The music, of course, James Gunn knows how to incorporate music into a story and let it tell the rest of the story or add more to it. Seeing this family, the Guardians dance, especially Drax who has repeatedly refused to do so and also Nebula who's, you know, not to want to dance as well but she finally does also. Groot, Kraglin and finally Rocket and the final shot resting on Rocket, the one the story revolved around. This was just a perfect conclusion to a trilogy to a beautiful movie yes these whole scenes can be summarized with adam warlock's reaction now that's it for this amazing heartbreaking emotional incredible moments in the guardians of the galaxy volume 3 fresh of breath air for the mcu fans who've been pretty much disappointed in you know phase 4 of the mcu and even with the start of phase 5 perfect conclusion to a trilogy to the guardian story even though there's also more to tell now do let me know in the comments below what you thought of this movie and what were your top three moments in the movie and if you enjoyed the video please leave a like subscribe turn it up notification bell not to miss any new video as always nerdy cga see you guys in the next one